Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to the new season of Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John. And uh, this week we are diving into the zeitgeist to discuss the topic of privilege. I'm privileged. How about you? So oh, yeah. privileged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. are. Well, we'll, we'll discuss it later. <laughs> um, I was just talking about this beer. I'm very privileged. Yeah. Well, yeah. That. Well, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. I, I feel like I am. I, yes. You know, you know. If nothing else, the beer is privileged. On that note, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking White Noise. From the St. Arnold Brewing Company in Houston, Texas. I don't know what the ABV is on this. Uh, 19. Uh, but this is a Belgian-style Vinton. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it's probably not too high if it's a whip beer. Uh, probably about a 5 or uh, a 6. I'm telling you now, I have high expectations for this because it's St. Arnold. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Right. Let's see. Uh, do, do, nope. 5.3. 5.3. Yeah, it's okay. about what I expect from a whip beer. Okay. Cool, cool. So we are doing privilege, and uh, oh, it smells so good. I, even from so I'm excited away. about doing this show. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm a little uncomfortable about doing this show. Uh, Ready to get your privilege handed to you? Yeah, and you know we've we, we've dealt with some of these these topics. I think this is a difficult topic for yeah. for us to do. It is. Um, but I do, I'm glad that we're doing it because it is something that's been so discussed, um, in kind of the, the popular conversation, um, from a it, it lot of It seems to be in the air. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It absolutely is. And it has been for a while. Um, but I think it's about time we take a look at it from, from kind of the position that we do on the show of just trying to kind of look at it from all sides and be as objective as we can about it. A drunk and objective position. Yes, a yeah, drunk yeah. and Buzzed. objective position. We Buzzed. only get drunk on the New Year's show and that one where that uh where that beer was so bad we broke out the wine. And the, the alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a that was a rough one. I don't even that was a rough enough I don't remember the show. I just remember the, the, the beer and the wine was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. talk to me. Yeah, so kind of the direction I wanted to start with this. Um I think this is a hard conversation to have because it is so much in the public sphere right now. And I think people have developed emotional attachments to sides of the conversation Absolutely. and blind spots in, the, in their own arguments. So I wanted to start really simple with a definition of the word privilege. I know how much you love definitions. Yeah, it helps. So a privilege, the noun, not the verb, is a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group of people. And it gave it gave a, a, an example that I wanted to save here because I realized I've, I'd used the word so many times in the negative and now it's kind of being flipped around. So here's the, the sentence that I think we've, we've all said before. Education is a right, not a privilege. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's so... Or maybe we've said it, you know, it's a privilege, not a right. But still that, that yeah, same I, kind of... I, I've said the other way. Right, right. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but still yeah. that context, yeah, that's a yeah. completely different context, but Absolutely. it's the same word, right? Absolutely. So we now have a definition to work from. I wanted to start with a much less controversial discussion so we could form a, a philosophical framework to work from and then try and apply it to things much closer to home. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about privilege in an international sense. Because I think uh, in our generations, we've grown up and, and we've heard a hundred times from our parents about how privileged we were to be born into a country where, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to hear your bitching. You live in America. You gotta, you've got it good. Fin finish your food. There are people point. starving in China. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, how many, how many times this country have, have uh, recently, and we can talk about far past, but more recently, how many times in this country in our lifetime have ethnic groups or or um, uh, religious groups or or nationalities been mass slaughtered? How many times in this country have women been did, stoned did, for? Did the death squads come and knock on your neighbor's door yesterday? Yeah, yeah. right. Um, well, and I think something um, something worth not just the rate of of how frequently it happens, but something else to consider there is. When was the last time it was publicly acceptable for that to happen? Um, you know, because there there are the the instances where those sorts of things do happen, but they are um, 
publicly yeah, we had the lynching ridiculed. in Jasper. We yeah. had, you know, th- th- there's been some of that stuff, but it's not something that is institutionalized. Yeah, anymore. nobody yeah. nobody is yeah. um, praising I'll, these I'll, actions. I, I, I want to kind of take a step over here though, because we, we we kind of brought that up as you know as Americans. But I think if you're English or you're Canadian or you're, I, I think they're probably here in the same yeah. thing. Most Westerners, most Western world, uh, and 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 Eastern. I think the Japanese probably tell their kids that stuff. I think that there's there's that that thought out there of hashtag uh, first world problems. Yeah, first world problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, kind of expanding. I like the idea of looking at it in an international perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you know, you you see this really interesting divide when you start to look at what countries have more privilege than other countries. That, that leads into a conversation I want to have much later in the show about racial privilege because I could not find a source on privilege that wasn't talking about white privilege. I mean, yeah. that is really the dialogue. But we, we can clearly see from racial divides and from um, the layout of countries and how they're racially inhabited that at some point, whether through creation or through evolution, I don't want to have that conversation right now, humans... Uh, existed in a centralized location and some of them migrated north some of them migrated east and some of them migrated more equatorial right and we can see from the color of their skin which ones were closer to the equator and which ones weren't sure and if you look at the countries and i don't know all the reasons maybe it's resource related maybe it's innovation related doesn't matter the the group that migrated north and formed these light-skinned people tended to to fare a lot better than the group that migrated yeah. south. If you look, a lot at, of reasons for that. But, uh, yeah, a lot, lot of different suspicions. We're not. I don't want to get into the sociology of it, but uh, right. But there's a lot of reasons that are that that are clearly not, uh, not not based on on your skin color or or I hate the term race because there's one race. But uh, right. But the uh, you know the layout of the earth, geography, huh? what animals can kill you in those places. There, there, there's a lot of other reasons for it. Yeah. So so at some level. We benefit because at some, you know, whether, whether. At some point, the ancestors. Benefit. Yeah, at some point, the ancestors went left. Some of them went right. And we were part of the left ancestors. Yes, yeah, we, yeah. You know. Yeah. And, um, you know, from that, we, we've, we've, we've experienced great benefit. And even sometimes taking that benefit and rolling it back over on the right turning ancestors in an empirical fashion to subjugate them to our benefit make make the make our benefit even better at their expense i mean yeah. is there any argument that that's happened no uh you know I, i'm reminded of uh, we did a show that's probably not out there it's probably over a year old now so uh, we did a hard shot on uh rudyard kipling's the white man's burden a few mm-hmm. at, at mm-hmm. some point yeah, yeah that was alongside and, scientific racism yeah. and is it gone? gone now. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's gone unless you're on uh, on our Patreon. Yeah, right? five dollars or higher. Uh, but uh, but but I'm I, I've always found that to be a very powerful uh, piece, and and the fact that you know uh, while 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 we talk about about the uh, the privilege of it in that time period, now we're talking about the age of the empire. They they, they identified it as a burden because you had yeah. to care for this thing. Uh, how how. How, yeah, you. The privileged person arrogant. was the one to be taken care of. Well, no, no. The, the, the white man's burden. The thought was that the uh, that, 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 that the burden the white man had was that he had to care for these these other darker skinned people. Yeah, that that, was, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. The people, it, uh, the darker skinned people in that in that piece were the ones with the privilege because they got to be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, which which amazes me whenever yeah. you, you think about how you can turn privilege on its uh, you know on its ear like that. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, you you kind of got a good point. It hadn't always been obviously it hasn't always been been about skin color. You know, you have a uh, uh, think think about in, in the United Kingdom, you had the uh, the privilege of being Protestant instead of being Catholic. Right. You know, think right. about Sunnis and Shias. Uh, think about uh, you know, uh, Going to China and you know the two China policy and what's going on there, uh, uh, Nepal. Uh, there, this is this is something that's not always about about, about skin color and race. Right. Sometimes, in fact, it's usually not. It's I think that's usually a byproduct, but it's usually about is power. Yeah, yeah. You know which, which group has power. Well, and and I think the reason that race ends up um, being such a large. Uh, factor of it whether that's the underlying factor or not is because it is an easily distinguishable trait sure sure you can you can draw a line and say 
you can walk down the street and say these people should have power and these people shouldn't have power if you're trying to exert that onto people. Yeah, if you want to reduce it down to a Dr. Seuss book, that that makes it very easy. And yeah. I think I think it I think it's it wor- I think we have done that a lot of times. Yeah. I, I want to speak for a minute for a minute because you mentioned something that I think is important to this conversation, which is power. And I actually, while I was doing this research, I ran across a philosopher who I think we need to do like a whole show on some of his stuff mm-hmm. called Falcott. Oh, yeah. I, I read the stuff that you sent out to me. I want to read just a passage from that thing yep. I sent out. Um, and and, and to, to give you a little bit of background on Falcott for anyone who's listening, he is a very much, he's libertarian but, and, and not philosophical libertarianism in, in the sense of free will, but he's, he's libertarian in the idea that people should be free but not necessarily from the same vein of libertarianism, should I say, that the party is attached to. Right. It's more of a f- different kind of philosophical libertarianism, should I say. Um, but but here's the, the, the passage that, that he, he, he kind of goes through. In seeing through the imaginary singularity of power, uh, Falcott was able to also envision it set against itself. He was able to hypothesize and therefore to study the possibility that power does not always assume just one form and that in virtue of this, a given form of power can coexist alongside or even come into conflict with other forms of power. Such coexistence and conflicts, of course, are not the mere speculative conundrums, but are the sort of stuff that one would need to empirically analyze in order to understand. So where I think that's important, his his big contribution is where other philosophers have tried to define in a philosophical manner power and say this is power and therefore we need to stop people from accumulating large amounts of X, whatever X is that is power. Falcott has repeatedly and openly refused to do that. His whole philosophy is that it is a mistake to try and define power because defining power then makes this box where you say, well, this is power, so this is the bad thing, so all this other stuff is okay, so we shouldn't worry about that stuff. And he says, no, power shifts, power changes. Mm -hmm. What's power today is not power tomorrow. Your ability to hit someone over the head with a club today does not have anything to do with your possession of a nuclear weapon tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is just, is, is, is not define power and realize that power from one day to another changes. And I think that that's a very interesting point in this conversation because in the past, we've talked about governmental or tribal power as this large kind of power. And a lot of times when this conversation about privilege comes up, uh, people say, well, no, 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 there's no law that says that. So it's not that. But I think that is back to that, that same fallacy that Falcott was trying to, to get at and saying, well, you've defined power now. Power is just what the government says. And in defining power, we have limited our scope and said, well, the other things are okay. It doesn't matter what society does. It doesn't matter what this individual does because it's not the government and the government is power. And that's mm-hmm. the only thing. And I think we've probably fall, fallen victim to this same kind of thinking that Falcott is, is kind of rearing against. You seem to be thinking there, Mike. What do you... I don't know that I agree with it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, 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 to kind of wrestle with that right now. But, but I think that uh, I, I think if, there, if there's any sense of privilege at all, it has to, it has to come from power. It, I mean, it, 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 it would have to. I agree. I, I completely agree with that. What, what my critique is, is not that privilege doesn't come from power. It's that we've narrowly defined power to mean what the state says. Or we've narrowly defined power to being, uh, you know, w- for instance, with the um, uh, 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 Occupy Wall Street movement. A lot of the critique of them was that these people are just people that... That, that happen to have a lot of stuff. They're not like the government. They don't have a lot of power. But I, th- I think there was a flaw in that critique to say that large amounts of wealth aren't power. And I think there's a flaw in that critique to say that um, living in a society where you mostly agree with or, or have common roots with the people around you and there's a small group that doesn't, doesn't give you an amount of power there, a familial power. a uh, uh, Power uh, is synonymous with control. Right. Yeah. I think it does, though. I, 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 I don't. I, I'm. I'm. I, I don't understand how it doesn't. To me, if you're, if you're part of the privileged class, by definition, you have. Uh, you know, by by having privilege, you have a degree of power over other uh, other people. Right. And to argue that, I, you, you can argue that it shifts, and it does. It does. Yeah. We've we've seen that happen, but it shifts very slowly most of the time. Uh, it shifts very slowly until. 
you have that one quick abrupt shift. You know, you have uh, the king overthrown and, and the reign of terror in, in, in Paris. Mm-hmm. But but you still have a situation in most cases where, uh, you know, coming from power equates having power. Right, right. Well, and, if you and, didn't, we wouldn't have had a Bush and a Clinton both running for president last time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, well, and, and I agree with that. And, and I... Um, you, you said it shifts slowly, and then you, you talked about a quick shift. I think what generally happens, and, and tell me if you think I'm sorry, I keep hitting my mic here. If you think I'm way off base here, I think it sl- shifts slowly and unseen. So while the king is losing his power, the people, I think he doesn't necessarily realize that. Sure. And then one moment the scales tip, and then once those scales tip, he sees. All the pieces, you know, Machiavelli writes about this, yeah, the yeah, yeah. slow loss of power, and then... And then all of a sudden it's gone. It, all of a sudden everybody's beheaded. Yeah, you tons know? of examples. The Reign of Terror yeah. there, uh, uh, Lenin overthrowing the uh, the Tsarist in Russia, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I, I, okay, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, but, but, you know, even in those cases, even in those cases when I look at it, uh, the Glorious Revolution in England... You had Oliver Cromwell, who was a, a, you know, a, a, a landed nobleman that emerged power. That's still privilege. In, uh, in, in Russia, you had uh, uh, Nikolai Lenin emerges power, who came from the, the, the wealthy lawyer class, the bourgeoisie. You, you, you know, you had uh, in, uh, in, in uh, French Revolution, Robespierre did not come from the poor classes. It, you know, you, you still got, it's still the privilege that come up. Uh, India, when, it, when, when India overthrew, uh, uh, overthrew England and established themselves, it wasn't the the, the, the dark skinned native Indians that ended up running things. It was the lighter skinned ones. You, you still had this, this this system of this caste system that was there. So you you still had this privilege that was happening. I think that it can have a shift, but it's but it's 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 hard for me to argue that power doesn't equate to uh, to privilege. Well, and I'm certainly not arguing that. I think it, but I think he did. I, no. I don't think he did. No, I think what and I. I I was actually about to jump in and say I think there are two different conversations happening here because I think what he is is trying to say here is that we are uh, in in many instances have attempted to define power in a very narrow set. Um, you know, power is exerted with money. Power is exerted with location. Power is exerted um, in the structure of society today with uh, sex and gender. There are tons and tons of ways that power is exerted. And when you define power and in turn privilege in a very narrow way, it kind of negates and allows many other types of power and privilege to be ignored. It creates and blind spots. Okay. Okay. I, I, I guess I can see that. I, uh, I don't know. The, the historian in me doesn't see that as being something that's, that, that's, that's, that's true academically, okay? Yeah. But it might be true, uh, 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 layman. Um, yeah. Pardon me for having this cough. I've had this cough for weeks now. But uh, sometimes I think I have a big blind spot. For it, I, I just I, I I try and be aware of it, but I have a big blind spot because I spend so much time in the academic world. Mm-hmm. And honestly, there, there there's nobody in the world stupider than academics. Uh, I, I, I am one of them. Uh, so so sometimes I, I kind of lean on y'all to show me show me this show me the way as peter frampton would say <laughs> because uh you know I, I get stuck in that bubble mm-hmm. and it's hard for me to get out of it well yeah and, and not to beat a dead horse here but th- the way that i kind of envision what he's saying in my own mind is very much uh like the he- the hebrew arguments on god right the, they 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 strictly forbid naming and and talking yeah. about the power of god because in talking about it, you've limited what actually is God. Mm-hmm. And I, I look at, at his arguments on power much the same way. We shouldn't say what power is because power is what it is, and that we limit be, it. That may be the best explanation for that. I, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. You just put it in egghead talk for me, and I understand now. Thanks. Well, and I, I think there is, uh, I guess, pardon this pun, an empowering element to that. Um, to recognize that this narrow definition of power that we've all sort of accepted is flawed in its in its own nature, and recognizing that power does have uh, many different avenues. Well, it's kind of the inherent 
nature of language is that that, that language can never accurately explain what is. It, it, right. It, you know, it, it it explains as best as it can to understand, but 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 without experience, you don't you don't know what is. Saying an idea limits that idea in some in some respect. I agree. I yeah. Agree. Whenever you say that you have to be white and wealthy and own a bunch of land to have power, then how do you explain? President Obama's two terms. Well, you how know, do you, you explain you that? How do you explain um, the power exerted by workers when they strike? Uh, yeah, African yeah. warlords. Yeah. yeah. That. Yeah. Um, any number of instances. And and I think, I think that... Anytime you talk in absolutes, you're gonna, you, you have a problem. Yeah. yeah. And I think in defining power, that. you... <laughs> um, not only does it allow the opportunity for certain types of power and, and by extension privilege to be abused... Um, but I also think it can serve the function <coughs> of um, psychologically decreasing the power of certain other groups and, and uh, causing them not to recognize or not to um, take advantage of their privilege. While we're talking about whiteness, power, and privilege, I, I do want to exercise a little bit of mine real quick. Producer, um, there's a couple of the uh, flute-type glasses in the kitchen, and there's some more on the stand over there. Can you get us some? This beer is good out of the can, but I want to try it in, yeah, a, in a glass do, as well. Do something a little different there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. While he's doing that, hey, this, uh, these new digs you've got us here are pretty pretty incredible. I like the I like the studio. Incredible. I like yeah. that. Well, that. It's, it's, it, 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 you know, we've, we've been in a— uh, Close that door, please. We've been in a little room at a pool hall. We've mm -hmm. been in a big room at a pool hall. We've, mm -hmm. we've been, been in a, a we've been in a pool hall while music was playing and people were hitting 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 balls, uh, racks of balls. And I think this is or this as, is, yeah, never this mind. is pretty important. <laughs> I, I was going to go into that, but it's okay. Getting racks of balls? You were going to yeah. go with that, weren't you? No, I was oh, going to okay. go with the time that the guy came up and was like, oh, hey, yeah. guys, can yeah. we like uh, smoke pot in here? <laughs> and we're like, um, no, and we're also not going to have a conversation with you while we're on the air. And that was in season one. Uh, yeah, that was so, season uh, one. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, this this is nice what y'all have done in here. And, and, and the, 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 the our, our excellent producer over here uh, has, his own has got his own station now. This, yeah. is, nice. this is pretty incredible. Well, and, and it's going to be getting better. Uh, hopefully, the every, shag carpet is going to help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, everybody is, is – the audio is not too bad, but we are getting a little bit of an echo, and so we are going to be putting some soundproofing panels here. We're going to be improving as we go, but, but we are – He says soundproofing panels. I say shag carpet. Well, we, think, we have options. I'm just saying shag carpet's cheap. Yeah. But anyway – sir. So we, we, okay. we've discussed a little bit. I, I think we can all agree that privilege derives its, itself from some form of power, whatever that is, right? Right. Agreed. And, and I think we, we, we can agree that privilege also has to do with things that you didn't control. We talked earlier yeah. about the ancestors going left versus the ancestors going right. That I don't think it has to, but I think that's tradition. I think that's the biggest part of the problem that people have with privilege and yeah. the discussions that they're having today. I, I don't think most people recognize it as privilege if it's, if it, if it's, uh, uh, self-attained. Mm -hmm. Now I, 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 I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. you know, I took the privilege test. I took all this stuff yeah. and, and they don't see the self-made, the self-made man that comes from a poor condition as being privileged. They see the person that was born into it as privileged. Uh, and, and, and it kind of makes sense when you think about it because you didn't attain it from privilege. I think privilege, to, to call it privilege, it has to be attained from privilege. Well, let me ask this. What what do you think would be privilege that was not... Uh... Well, I think you can come from a point in your life where you were not privileged um, and reach a point where you are privileged. Now, such uh, as? For example, if you are were homeless with your you know, mentally challenged single parent as a child and you manage to, uh, you know, keep your, your tent near the school so that you could go to school every day. You managed to graduate. Um, maybe you, I guess you could argue that you were privileged enough to have the ability to have your tent near the school or even just have a school in your vicinity. Um, but so you graduate, you get a job, you pay your way through college and you get a, um, you know, better job than anybody in your family has ever had. And now you have the means to not only take care of yourself, but to travel, to uh, put your kids into private school, yada, yada. At that point, you are living a privileged life. Okay. I, I, I think we have two different meanings of privilege here. I think you have uh, privilege as a good thing. 
which is true. Your, your privileged life is your life is good. Mm -hmm. And then you have that, that definition that I'm working with of privilege is almost like it's good through ill got, you know, it's good through something. And my argument there would be that, that if you're that person, you are not privileged because you have earned everything. You've worked your way. Your children are privileged because now they can benefit from it. But now that you've attained that status, there is access that you have now that you wouldn't have had if you didn't have those. I, th I think that's there true, but I think it's earned people access treat and there's you. difference there. People treat you in a different way because you have that status sure. that they wouldn't have treated you that way if you didn't have that status. And those are privileges that can propel you even further. And it, I think it is privilege. I, 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 we can talk about yeah. whether privilege is earned or deserved, but it is privilege nonetheless. I understand where you're coming from. I, I don't understand privilege in that way, personally. And I okay. think I, I think there's a different. I think you can easily argue that the child of the self-made man is privileged. I have a hard time saying that the self-made man is privileged uh, be, be, because he didn't use the privilege to get there. Now, yes, at, at, at some point he is he, he's wealthy and it makes it easier to get more money, but he earned that first spot. So, okay. uh, uh, so to me, to me, that doesn't meet the definition. I completely understand why it does to you. Okay. So from my view, listening to, to, to that, I actually think Anna's right here. Um, and, and while that was going on, I went back and I reread that definition. And it says a special right, advantage, or immunity gained or available only to a particular person. So I think you're right. But I don't think that that is what the main debate over privileges over. But I think you're right. And I, I wanted to get to that because I think the debate that's being had right now and the debate that should be had is uh, privilege that is granted to people for things that they have literally no control over. Yeah. Your gender, your race, your sexuality, your marital... Well, you have control over your marital status, but it in, still shouldn't impact. In many countries. To an extent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In some countries, you don't. Well, yeah. Um, well, and even even if you do have control, you have control over it, but it's it, but it's not like you can control it immediately. There are still hoops, and there's st there's still things you have to do. So, but anyway, uh, the point being, being granted privilege for things unrelated to, um, you know, excuse me, uh, being being given certain uh, advantages in life for things that you didn't work for, um, I, I think is the conversation that is happening and needs to happen. Okay. Okay. That, 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 that kind of makes sense to me. I just, mm -hmm. uh, again, I don't I, want to criminalize my, the self-made person. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to. And I don't think it's about criminalization. I just think, okay. I, I think, Wrong it's, I, yeah, I think it's about, I just think there's a different understanding of this. And I, I think that, um, I'm trying to go with my, with the understanding that, that I see out in the world with people. And I don't think that they see it as privilege if if you started with nothing and you and you and you built something. Um, and I'm, I'm arguing that I think that they should. I I don't necessarily think it should be looked okay. down on. I don't think it should be looked down on. But I think that if we are going to honestly evaluate whether or not we are given things based on our status in life, um, I think that we can recognize our privilege without feeling shame over it. And I think that's, that's a Certain big argument too. When I took that, when I took that, that, that privilege test, I think I'm the only one that did it. Cause I was just curious about what it would be. Uh, Are you talking about the Buzzfeed one? I took up like three or four of them. Oh, I don't okay. know. I've taken but the Buzzfeed I, one before. I was curious, but uh, you, you know, they all came out about the same, yeah. but the, uh, um, that was one of the things that, it, that, that they all ended with was, uh, was this is your degree of privilege. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. You should recognize it, yeah. you know? And, 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 and that's, I think there is a degree of shame to that to today. I think there is a uh, there is society as a whole shames the privilege. Well, I think uh, some people. How many times have we heard "check your privilege"? Yeah, I wanted to have a conversation about that phrase. Yeah, do we want to? Because I think we're moving into to ethics and response right now. I think so too. We want to talk about the beer and then we'll come back. We want to ethic it. ethically respond to the beer. Yeah. Well, okay. we, yeah, well, I had done anything to me, so you know. <laughs> It did something to me. It, it did. Uh, you it, want to start? It was, it, it was a good thing. Uh, let, 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 me, let me get a drink here real quick. Mm -mm -mm. All right. This is uh, White Noise by the St. Arnold Brewing Company in Houston, Texas, in a 5.3 5 5 uh, ABV. Uh, I will tell you that, in my opinion, this is a 
this is a very light beer. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the alcohol in it, you can, almost can't taste it. It's, right. it, it, it's very, very back in. Uh, it, it's got, um, I like it. I like it for what it is. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think if you're looking for a light, this would be a good summer beer, a light uh, uh, beer that you could drink easily. This is a this is a high quality one for that. I will say that this to me is not a beer drinker's beer. This is uh, because it doesn't have those deep overtones that the beer drinker wants. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think it's successful at what it is trying to do. I think it's very good at that. I don't think this is going to be a beer that uh, that I'm going to remember for a long time. Uh, I sus- if I was uh, if I was picking beers just off the top of my head, I would say that this would be the beer that I would buy me. This is not the beer I would buy uh, by, by John or Anna if we were at the bar because it, I don't I don't think this is y'all y'all style. Right. Just in, it's just my opinion. If it's the uh, only craft beer at the bar, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and it's St. Arnold's at that weird point where they're they're a craft brewery, but they're 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 getting to be such a big craft brewery that they're, they are they're almost mass uh, mass produ- production now. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say that, that that because it's successful at what it's trying to do, uh, and, and but it's not doing anything just extraordinary. I'm going to go with a uh, I'm going to go with a two four on this one, just just below the uh, you know just below that benchmark. Uh, I I was tempted to give it more just for the can because the can's pretty cool, but yeah. I'm going to go two four. Yeah, well I'm I'm glad you said that. I was I was kind of worried you were going to. Hit it really high, and then we have this awkward conversation where I torpedo it. But um, yeah, I agree. It's it's light, um, watery. <laughs> comes to mind. Uh, it definitely has those characteristics of a whip beer. I think I've I've been a little bit spoiled, and and I don't know if they're actually better if you count the style and all that. But some of these beers with with the more pronounced clove and banana yeah, yeah. tones to it. And I, I really like that. And this one is is kind of like wet beer light to me, you know, yeah, from, yeah. from what I've had in the past. Um, I hate to do this St. Arnold's, but I'm just, I'm not really impressed now. It's completely drinkable. Somebody hand this to me. Yeah. I drink it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. I wouldn't turn my nose up yeah, at it. Th- these beers are probably going to get finished and are going to get stuck in the fridge for Thomas Cryer to come. <laughs> oh, <laughs> later. Um, but all that said, oh, I'm, love Thomas. I'm giving it a two. Two? A two. Okay. Two. It's higher than Higher than I thought you would do, uh, yeah. honestly. This is funny. Um, so, this is a dry hopped wit beer, wit beer, whatever, however you want to say that. Um, and I think the reason that they chose to dry hop it was because they knew they had a shit beer to start with. Ooh, really? Yeah. I think without that added hoppiness, it would be lacking in most things that this beer would need to be good it is drinkable Mm -hmm. i I do think that that dry hopping saved it um but without that i don't i don't think this would be a good beer at all um with that i give it a 1.9 really okay okay yeah I, uh, I couldn't bring myself. I have a because, hard time arguing against y'all. I uh, the, the, the reason I put it so high is because I, I get I think it was successful at producing what they were trying to produce, and they were trying to produce a beer that was uh, palatable to the uh, the the, 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 the uh, beer drinker, but was something that you could hand your mass production beer people and they'll they'll enjoy. And I'm not sure they would. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess oh, no, I've kept most of those people out of my life. So I don't have a whole lot of experience there. I guess there's three questions we need to ask about this beer. There, there are, there are. So I guess right. you want me to let's go in order. That you, we'll go in order. Yeah. Uh, lawnmower beer, yeah, easily yeah, a lawnmower definitely. beer. One of the best lawnmower beers. You, know, yeah. you can drink this like water. Um, as far as the date goes, I'm going to go back to one of my signature moves. I used to have these little business cards I handed out. <laughs> I had my phone number on them and said call for a mediocre time. Yeah. I think if you're trying to take them out for a mediocre time, this is a mediocre beer that can certainly fill that uh, void. Better so, than mediocre. So, Anna, okay. is this going to get you laid on that mediocre date? This dry hopped beer will only get you laid after a long dry spell. After a long dry spell. It, 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 better, it better have been coming anyway. Yeah. It won't ruin your chances, but it's not yeah. going to... How, how about if you have a great ass? Would, it, would this then get mm-hmm. you laid if you had a great ass too? 
No, no. I'm, I'm not an ass. <laughs> I'm not an ass man. But so even a, even so, not a man even. Well, that's that, a good that point. was the secret there. Yeah. <laughs> but but even so, like even there, like when you argue the ass got you laid and the beard. I mean, I, th- I think it goes. That's back a good to, point. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, you know, if if it requires a, a, a good ass as well, is it is it a good beer? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I got to be honest that that, that that back in back in my single days, uh, a good ass in any beer would get you laid. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know if much has changed there. I, I don't have a great ass, so I can't experiment with that. In fact, in fact a, a good ass and, and sometimes no beer would work. So, you know, whatever it takes. That was the 80s, though. <laughs> Literally, you just kind of had to trip into dick. <laughs> Is that what you used to do? Is, Did you used to trip into dick? Whatever it took. Whatever it took. <laughs> don't judge me. Okay, so. I had Elton John and Queen on the jukebox. Everything was good. So now that we've, we've, had, we've talked about the beer... Um, I want to talk about another article I read, and it talks about that exact phrase, check your privilege. Yep. And he's, he was analyzing what it meant to check your privilege and what privilege meant in general. And he um, kind of breaks down two categories. I have a really short passage from him. Thus, the phrase can be seen as having two main functions. In, an, in addition to its dramatic and rhetorical use, one is as a reminder, the other is as an attack. I will consider each of these in context of critical thinking. So what he's talking about in a reminder versus an attack. And and I think what makes the news and what what gets people fired up so it makes, you know, viral sense um, is the attack one. Where somebody's clearly, somebody's talking, and they get up there and say, check your privilege. And they're saying, shut up. They're attacking them. They're saying, you don't have the right to speak because of something you probably couldn't control. I mean, we yeah. had that conversation of mm-hmm. what it meant, but but that you probably couldn't control. The other one that he was he he really addressed was, while it may not be the best phrasing, he could see where it could clearly mean, you're talking about these things with the blind spot of your own background. You need to check that and realize where you came from and that there are other views, because you're talking in absolutes. Yeah. And I think that latter view is a is is a much more. Um, I, useful yes i think check your privilege is like taxation is theft it's something that was incredibly powerful until it was overused and now it, it, it's meaningless well i mean okay so so probably I don't so think it is uh, probably so it's been overused probably so it's taken on a life of its own like taxation is theft has but even if we look at taxation is theft it had a meaning it did. And then it grew and and i think we, we can look at those because i think there are still people who use both phrases in its original context, I think so too. But I just but I, it gets I, muddled by the baggage it carries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, and and I, I think it's a powerful, powerful statement. To check your privilege is a powerful statement if it's used to mean think about what you're saying for a minute. Yeah. yeah. Think about the fact that that, that 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 the only reason you're able to say this is because of your privilege. Well, but I think that if something... it's being used to to silence the masses, now we have a problem. Yeah, absolutely. But I think that argument can be made for literally anything. If you're using any, oh, agreed, any, agreed, any phrasing. But when you hit you catch phrases, podium, catch phrases happen. Fine, but if you're using your podium to silence the masses, um, without reason, you know, if when you're reasoning with people and their mind changes, that's vastly different than just saying "shut up," you disagree with me, and you're not allowed to speak. Um, but. We checked our privilege at the beginning of this episode. We didn't use the phrasing, but we did acknowledge the fact that we are all white people living in America and that that does make it difficult for us to talk about sure, the topic sure. of privilege. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I but think... But the fact that we didn't use that line goes m- m- means quite a bit there because that is so loaded now that, that we chose to, to, to say it a different way. I think it's loaded when... First, okay. I think you're talking about the far extremes of the spectrum here. You're talking about um, a group of people who are largely only choosing to hear the people on the other side of the spectrum using that phrasing as a means of attack and who are only hearing it as a means of attack. I, I think so too, but I, but but that's... You know, it, it, it's that vocal minority that defines things so many times. And uh, I don't think we should let, let them do that, is what I'm saying. But but society does, and we're not talking about what you and I do, or you or you and John do, or John. We're talking about what society does, and that that's what they do. And I'm saying I don't think we should let them do that. I I think 
I shouldn't let them do that, and you shouldn't let them do that, and John shouldn't let them do that, and other individuals should not let them do that, and that if we stop allowing them to do that, we can use these sorts of phrases in a useful and productive fashion. I think we have individuals who are, and I think that we shouldn't allow the, the loud minority to dictate how we have our conversations. Well, so and I believe in Santa Claus and fairy tales, but you know, yeah. that it, the, the fact is that that's in the real world, that's not how it works. Yeah. It, but, but I agree with you. It's I do agree with you. It's not how it works. It does not mean that we shouldn't try to change it. But, but I have some question a, a little bit about what you're saying. You're saying we should not allow. What does that even mean? Because we're talking about societal groups from what the masks are doing. So by not allow, should we ignore what they say? Should we make a law? I mean, what does it mean not to allow society to do what society is doing? What does that even mean? I think it means to have conversations like this. I think it means to use the phrasing in a constructive fashion. And when somebody questions you that you are trying to attack somebody, have a reasoned conversation about it. And I think that the more of us that are going around doing it, that, the more we can change the dialogue. We have seen dialogue shift over and over again. And I think that it can happen. So I don't, more or less, I don't think we've seen reclaiming, but reclaiming things like this very often. Okay. I, I guess you've seen dialogue as a whole shift, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard to, to, to reclaim a, a phrase that's been, that, that's been, uh, been damaged at a certain point. Okay. So, so more or less what you're saying is society should not do that. I mean, that, that's, that's really all, all it amounts to. I think that what I'm saying is don't let a small group of people determine how it is that you're going to behave. Define, go ahead. But, but we, we've gotten back to that don't let. And, and I don't think, when, when I asked you earlier about well, what... Well, when, <coughs> when, when I think that check your privilege can be used usefully... I I don't stop using the phrase because a small group of people said, no, when you use that phrase, you're attacking people. Well, it, 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 except the phrase is no longer useful to you if people interpret it that way. I haven't found that to be the case. And, and I have. So okay. I, I guess we have different okay. opinions on that. Okay. So so anyway, we, we do have this 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 rhetoric right now around uh, uh, people calling out people for their privilege, uh, using phrases like check your privilege, whatever it whatever means it is, when yeah. they, when they say it and when they hear it, cause those can be two different things. Absolutely. Um, and then, uh, uh having, uh, I, 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 I faint to even call it a dialogue, an argument, you know, about, um, privilege and, and, and where this goes. So, uh, you know, kind of stepping outside of that whole box of groups of people yelling at each other. What, what does our privilege bring us? Because I know we can name a bunch of positive things our privilege brings sure. us. But morally, to be a moralistic person, to be a good person, what do we, what, with the great power comes great responsibility? What responsibilities do we inherit with our privilege? Wow, that, I, I have never taken Spider-Man and put it on white man's burden before. That, 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 that's an interesting idea there. Uh, do, do you have response? Do, I think the better question is, do you have responsibilities that come with that privilege? Yeah. Well, yeah. It, yeah. And I, I think what responsibilities are there encompass that? Because you could say none. I don't. You know. yeah, I, I think you can. Yeah. I think yeah. you can accurately say I don't have a responsibility to anybody. Uh, you know, I, and, and I, I think you can make that argument pretty easy that my only responsibility is to me. I don't have a responsibility to you or anybody else. I don't. I, I think that's an, a, a a logical argument. If you make that argument, does the counter argument apply? Because part of the reason that we have privilege, no matter what that privilege is, whether it's racial, whether it's it's economic, whether it's literate privilege, part of the reason we have privilege is because of societal structures that have been set up to benefit us. Now, some of these societal structures are obscure. There are things like uh, you need to perform this ceremonial act of getting your car inspected or whatever it is. Maybe it has a purpose, maybe it doesn't. But some of these these things are, are more moralistically based, right? You don't get to take things that other people have in their houses, right? That's the system. 
And so then my question is, if we look at our privilege, if we look at the benefit we've gained from certain systems, say, I don't have any responsibility because of that. Can we then really argue that the people who are being, who aren't benefiting from the system, who are possibly being hurt by the system, have any responsibility to uphold the system? Like, you know, we go, we go back, I hear over and over where people are saying, if you have privilege, you're not acknowledging it. They go break windows and they say, well, you have a responsibility not to break other people's stuff. And it's like, well, that's the system that's set up. But if you're arguing that the beneficiaries of the system have no responsibility to the people who aren't being benefited, how can you well argue that the people who aren't being benefited have a responsibility to uphold the system? Yeah, because those people are arguing the that the people that are suffering due to the system are beholden to the system that is causing them suffering. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think they are. And I, I, I think, you know, history has shown us that... Uh, that you're not beholden to it. That that, that you 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 have to rise up. Sometimes you got to break some windows. I mean, be, uh, heads behead some royal, royal royalty. Yeah, you know, sometimes heads got to roll. It's yeah, just that, that that's the way it is. Uh, but but you know, you're standing up to the privilege, and you have to be willing to pay the consequences when you do that. Right. Uh, uh, I don't I don't think that's the same thing. I and and, and I could be wrong. I don't think that's the same thing as it's as it's it's mirror opposite of, um, you know, I was born into a, a wealthy family, so I owe somebody something. You know, there's there's, I don't think anybody owes anybody anything, and I think that's a uh, that, that that's a logical argument. That having been said, I think it's perfectly fair to say, don't be an asshole, and if you got to, you know if 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 you got a leg up on something, help somebody out. That's not the same thing as saying I owe it to you. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think that we could even talk about debt to the future privileged people, right? Because when you talk about the French Revolution and heads rolling over this whole privilege thing, and it really was a very similar kind of argument over the distribution of power and privilege, that wasn't because one generation of, of, of nobility fucked everything up. No, it's because generations of it fucked things up. Yeah, and it was it was the people who were abusing their privilege early that rolled the heads of later people yeah. who were in power. And so do those early generations have a responsibility to their offspring to say, if we keep things going the way they are, your heads are going to roll. So it's probably better if we find something a little more equitable that everybody can be happy with Okay. I, again, I, I I don't like that word responsibility there because it, because it, it 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 leads to this this necessity, this idea of of has to happen. I don't think you have a responsibility to your your next generation. I don't think you have a responsibility to anybody. I think you shouldn't be an asshole and you should try and protect that. That's not the same thing as having a responsibility. Well, let me ask you this, because because you said we don't have a responsibility to other people, to society, to your future. Is there such thing as responsibility? Do you have a responsibility to anything or anybody ever? <coughs> I think you've got a responsibility to yourself. You, should, you know, the, the only requirement is that that that, that is self care, and and I think that's a logical argument. But beyond that, again, I think you're an asshole if you don't do it. But 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 responsibility. Uh, what is responsibility to yourself? Yeah, what is that even? Well, I, I think you got to, to 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 take care of yourself to 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 for, for, to self benefit. I think everybody has that. But I don't think that you, I don't think there's any case where <coughs> a single person has a responsibility to, <coughs> to someone else. So, because responsibility uh, means duty to me. So, so let me ask a, a, a woman gets pregnant, she has a baby, and she says, you know what, I'm going to stick it at a dumpster. There's no responsibility there. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I see where you're, where you're going. I think there is there, and I don't know where the line is. I don't understand that. I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to work my way yeah, through it. Yeah. Because I have a hard time with that word responsibility. I mean, you have a responsibility to society. No, I don't. I have a responsibility to myself. I don't think you don't can have asshole. a responsibility to yourself. Okay, then you'd have no responsibility at all. And and I think that's what you're arguing. I don't think well, I am. I think I think your definition of responsibility and mine are different. So I would but, agree with but, that. But with, with yours, with yours, I would agree. Okay. Yeah. I just don't think I. I have a problem with that word. I just have a problem with saying that that I am responsible to someone else, or you're responsible to someone else. You're 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 not. Uh, you know, you're you're just there's there is no 
duty to someone else. And to me, responsibility and duty are, 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 are very, very close words. So you think you, you should help other people? I absolutely, I think you should. Should implies obligation and responsibility as no, well. No, it doesn't. No, That's, it doesn't. Because, okay. there, because there's no requirement. Well, I, I think you can have a responsibility without a, a requirement, right? Um, for instance, uh, many times... Uh, we, we talk about being responsible stewards of, of our house or I, our property. I don't think you can because because as soon as you put that responsible word, now you have uh, you, you you've, you've put a legal term in there where people come. Because if you're not responsible for your land and your stuff, the government will come and fuck with you. If no. you're not responsible to your family, the government will come and fuck with you. If you're not res- okay, so you're thing. using responsible thing. in the legal sense. Absolutely, I am. Okay, I'm using well it as then a legally, I don't think that you have responsibility to yourself. Um, and I would argue I that we use the term responsible in a lot of ways, and I think. The confusion here is that we're not using it in a legal fashion. We're not saying that you are legally responsible for taking care of other people. I tell Jonah that he needs to be responsible with his phone. That does not mean that he is going to be uh, exposed to legal ramifications no, if but he it does damages mean, it. But it does mean he's going to be, be exposed to ramifications at home. You are the government at home, and he'll be responsible to that. But if you talk about government and ramifications, isn't it true that if the privilege, whether that's through government power or whatever, aren't responsible to the unprivileged, that heads roll? Absolutely, right? it's true. So, Absolutely, it's true. But that's, that, that's the effect of it. I just I, I I have real issues with saying that an individual is responsible to another individual. So let me ask: Is a government responsible to its people? Is that a responsibility? I think so because it because because that power is granted to it by the people. What is the in your mind the real distinction besides somebody of fifty people saying so? What is the real distinction between a law and the fact that you'll get arrested if you violate it? And the real consequences of the mob doing something if you don't take these actions. What is the real difference there? I'm not sure I understand the question. Ask it again. Okay. So you say if you're not a good steward of your property, the government will come yeah, and take yeah. it away from you. If you're not a good steward of society, society will come and break your windows or heads will roll. What is the effective difference in whether somebody with a badge does that or whether a mob of people do that? I mean, what is the effective difference there? I don't think there is an effective difference. I think there's a legal difference. So it's just the fact that a, that a body of 50 people came together and had a vote on whether... A, 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 a body of a majority came together and had a vote. Right. And, and I, I mean, I, I think if you're looking at it, that, that's what it comes down to. Again, I'm... I, to me, the word responsibility comes with duty. Mm-hmm. It has to. Uh, it has to or it's meaningless. Otherwise, you're not really saying responsible. You're saying it would be nice if you did this. To be responsible means there is a duty that you're going to do, and if you don't, there is a consequence for it. You are responsible for that. I agree with that. I agree with that. And I, th- I, I, I think I'm arguing the same thing here. I'm just saying that not all consequences come from the government. Some of those consequences too. come from you just – you weren't a good steward of Social society. Okay, I can, see, yeah. that. I can yeah. see that too where oh, wait, you were an asshole so society doesn't uh, – you know, uh, society chooses not to shop at your place because you're, right. because you're a dick. Yeah. You wouldn't right. bake the cake for the, for, for the gay couple so now nobody's going to shop with yeah. you. Yeah. I think that's, that's – that's government. I mean, that, that, that's what that is. Yeah. So, so oh, from right. there. I forget your definition of government. Okay. I remember. Yeah, but, I have the real definition of government. Yeah. I, I, you have a. But from there. I have the real definition of what a government is. But from there, couldn't we establish that if, if it's from government and this whole mob thing where they don't shop at your store yeah. forms yeah. a government, doesn't that then establish responsibility? Maybe I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. Yeah. My problem is I can't get to that duty. I think that 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 that, that you didn't. There was no requirement for you. Well, the, okay, but, but so okay. The, but no, I think there yeah. was. I think there was a de facto requirement because the, the, the society put this requirement on you. You did not meet it, and now the punishment is there. Okay. Yeah, the requirement is that. if you want people to buy your cakes, yeah, yeah, don't yeah, be a dickhead. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, I think we got there. Did we? <laughs> I think so. Okay. So um, now we, we, I think we've established that consequentially there's a responsibility 
using that. that no. I keep doing Quit this. Quit hitting okay. your microphone. I know. Okay. Con- so, where does the that... utilitarian argument. Okay. Yeah. Where... What is that responsibility? What is your duty? So, uh, if as as a as a as a wealthy person, as a as a, a person of a, a ethnic majority, what what's your duty to those who are less privileged? I think I this love is the, this silence. Yeah, I'm throwing this, throwing this out at you because I've answered this about fifteen times now. So uh, I, I, I don't. I don't oh, know how your else answer, answer was none. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know. Okay. No, um, but I, I do want to explore it. Well, <laughs> I, I thought the I don't know, and then some silence would be yeah. appropriate. But um, no, I, I I do want to explore it um, from something a little beyond none, and and look at what we could do. Um, so as somebody with privilege, so obviously the first step is acknowledging it, right? Right. Um. I think we can take steps to check our privilege when we're doing things like hiring and, um, and say, okay, why is it that I am maybe inclined to hire this person over this person? And taking a step back and saying, okay, am I looking at their qualifications for the job strictly? Um, I think that's the sort of thing that we can do when you're looking at pay saying, okay, what is the justification? Or, or I want to pay this person more. Why is it that I want to pay them more? Do they have some qualifications that make them more valuable to the company? Uh, let's get out of the workplace. Um, somebody give me an example out of the workplace. Well, that's, you know, you, that's where you, you might look at how happened. city council appropriates funds to one community or another yeah. or, or, you know, build sewage or parks mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. And so I think that that is a, an example of another position of power. And so I think the thing that we have to look at there is, again, checking your privilege and taking a step back and saying, why is it that I want to, um, that I'm <coughs> voting in favor of allocating these funds to the south side of town project, project as opposed to the north side of town project? Um and, and I think that we can do that. And if we do that and we can take a step back from our own privilege and the biases that we have, we can start to look at things a little more equitably. And I'm not saying that we should be jailed if we don't do that. But you might be mobbed one day if, if continually you, you might do. be, yeah. you know, or that cushy position that you love because people treat you a little bit nicer because you're on city council um may be challenged one day yeah and you're gonna lose that um i'm just gonna say i hope heads don't roll privilege abuse is privilege (laughs) removed eventually Yeah, Yeah. yeah um but so i think there are things that we can do i don't think that we should be jailed if we don't do them um i think there are levels i think you could probably reach a certain level of privilege abuse Mm -hmm. that could be i think i'm not thinking of any right now but i'm i'm not going to eliminate the fact that there could be a level to which that could rise that could qualify being jailed well graft what well graft in business where you use your connections to uh to to, to get get businesses uh, insider trading insider Okay, yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. 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 See, I wasn't thinking of him, but there are elements. Well, and, and and where I think that your responsibility comes in is first, as you said, to recognize, and then to to after you recognize your privilege, and I'm I'm even going to explain it beyond privilege. Don't just recognize your privilege. Recognize your demographics and your situation. Recognize that you are in the top two percent or the bottom two percent of pay. Recognize that you you are in these demographics based on where you live recognize who you are in the bigger picture and then do everything you can to remove those elements from your decision when they aren't important for instance you're hiring take the race question off the job application just take it off it's off most of them now yeah when you're when you're looking at which part of town you should improve as a city council member 
tell the people doing the surveys to not tell you what part of town it is. These are the income yeah. levels. These are their current situations, blah, blah, blah. And just present it and say, which one of these should we spend this 30000 or $3 million on or whatever? Yeah, you're building a park and say, okay, um, you know, we want to know the lay of the land. We want to know the population. Business around, around the area. Businesses around it. You know, nearby schools. That's what we want to know, not exactly where in town it is. Yeah. Of course, I don't know if there may be. Anyway. So I, I think for sure recognizing your blind spots and compensating for those is a powerful thing. Now, the one that starts to hang me up that I've heard the argument for a lot that I, I, I don't know if I can get on board with is this idea that where there are certain groups that are underprivileged, that we need to be doing things to artificially inflate their privilege to such a, a level that they can they can get out of a, a bad cycle, you know, to, to, to the point of, you know, um, well, you need you need you need quotas, yeah, you need racial, racial quotas, quotas, sexual quotas. Just, yeah, yeah. Well, you need to give three poor people free college every year just because they that gives them a chance to, to move in, whatever it is. Yeah. You know. Well, and my argument there is I don't think that is a sustainable solution. I think the sustainable solution is a conscious effort to remove that consideration whenever you have the ability. Um, uh, anyway. I think that is the the long term healthy solution for society as a whole. Here's my my issue with that is uh, I, I have real issues issues with with uh, with any kind of a quota system or anything because because you are de facto treating people differently based on their race or their gender or something. You're, they were you're, already being. Treated I, I realize that, that, but but you're you're using that as a defining reason. I have a real issue with that. But that having been said. We, we got started doing that really big in the 1960s and 70s, and it was effective. It has mm -hmm. been effective in, in, in bringing up, uh, uh, in, in leveling out the, the playing field in, in a lot of ways. I mean, uh, honestly, the, the, the first generation of African-American millionaires is, is retiring right about now mm -hmm. uh, be, because of a lot of that stuff that happened. I don't think it's a long-term solution. Right. I don't think it's something that that, that that you can you can go you know you can push through for a long time because I don't think that that if your goal is is ultimately to treat everybody the same and and for everybody to be equal and to be colorblind that you reach that by not doing that. Uh, right. So 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 I've, I've got some problems with it. I don't know what the answer is to it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but but you know it's it, it's hard to argue that it that it wasn't effective. Whenever you can just look at numbers and, and, and see that it was. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying. I think it was not effective in the long, or I don't think it's long-term effective. Yeah, I don't think it's something. I don't. I don't think it's something you can continue. I don't think those are the actions that change society. I, I agree. I agree. I think. It, I think it, a lot of times it divides society. It's, yeah. It makes people angry because you're 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 now. Well, what is it that people are siding with this whole white privilege discussion that we're having now? Not this particular discussion that we're having, but the, the one out in the greater society. The discussion, uh, the thing that's being cited by people being accused of having white privilege is, well, you know what? You can go to a, a company and get hired for the simple fact that you're black. Yeah. You can get hired for the simple fact that you are Native American. Now, there are minority scholarships. There's not majority scholarships. Yeah, exactly. Well, the question, the, the statement of that is... Most of them are majority scholarships, well, so, you know. Beside the point, uh, you know, but it yeah. is causing sure. division. A massive division. I, uh, I think it's it's quotas and things like that that have not been the sole culprit by any means, but have contributed well, to the issues that we're seeing now. It, there was a term that, 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 that started rearing its head in the late 70s, and, and, and it's never really gone away, although it's, it's, it's slowing down, reverse racism. Right. And that was the idea that, uh, uh, you, you know, that... that, that that you can be racist against the majority p party. I will say that there is a, uh, a big movement out there that s suggests that it's not possible to be racist against the, the majority uh, race because you have to have power to be to be to be racist. I I don't necessarily agree with that. But well, that, and then that's the, out there. that gets back into defining power in very narrow defining terms. Yeah, 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 you know. yeah. So uh, it's it's an interesting argument. I don't I don't know that we're gonna gonna reach an answer on this. I, I think it's something that's that's. It, it's very difficult to, to grapple with. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've worked in education for a long time where we have, we had to deal, deal a lot with, with, uh, race, racial reports and stuff. And, and, 
what I've seen happen over the last 20 years or so in education, though, is the reports aren't so much about race anymore as it's about a socioeconomic system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's fair. I think yeah. it's much more fair to, to look at something based on your SES than it is about your, your, your Well, race I think it's less gender. insulting, honestly. I think so, too. I think so, too. I, I mean, you know, maybe... maybe yeah, this because is... there are inherent assumptions that your race are tied to your SES. Well, yeah. well, but by going going through an SES system, you're looking at a condition. You're not looking at a uh, you know something that's, that's inherited. Yeah, right. well, and, and, and I think, and maybe this is one of my blinders as a white man. I, I hope it's not because I think it has horrible implications. But I think whenever you say that somebody is disadvantaged because... They're black, and and I think there, there's a there's there's a slight um, difference in saying they're disadvantaged because they're black, and they're disadvantaged because of the way people see black people. Yeah, yeah. But that they're disadvantaged educationally because they are black, and, and, and they are. Uh, if you, if you, if statistically, statistically, yeah. if you look at things uh, now, I can just tell you about, about the state of Texas, but uh, African Americans perform lower than uh, than whites. Uh, they perform lower than Hispanics. Hispanics are right between the two. Uh, so you start looking at this, and there are those people out there that argue that it's a, that it's a racial reason. But but if you take and you and you take race out and you put it as socioeconomic systems, suddenly it's not that blacks perform worse than whites. It's that the poor perform worse than the wealthy, and we have too many poor black people in this country. And, we, and yeah, and I can and, and it's generational. I can agree with that. And I think you have to take those statistics with a grain of salt. And I. I I hope we hit the nail on the head with it's because they're poor, right? I, yeah. I, I, I hope with every fiber of my being that that's the, the case uh, because we also see that there are websites you can go to and you can find that the sale of Kraft cheese strongly correlates to the divorce rate in Arkansas. But I don't think anyone yeah. assumes that Kraft cheese is causing people in Arkansas to get divorced. But you know what? It is delicious. Well, you know. I, I, I'm just saying there are people out there that I would leave for Kraft cheese. But... <laughs> but all, all, all that said, I think we can we can we can look at this number and say, as as a progressive people, I've interacted with people of many races. I can't find that that person has a mental disadvantage no. because they're that race. So let's look deeper into the data, and I think when you start to get into socioeconomic conditions, you've really are. I hope getting at the yeah. root of the well, problem. What you can look at sometimes is is poor communities have poorer schools than wealthy communities. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, right. And, and, and and that makes it more difficult. Yeah, uh, it does. Doesn't make it impossible any, by any stretch. We've had Clinton. I mean, Bill Clinton came from a very very poor system, and he, he I would say he was. I would argue today. that he was successful. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, you you look at this kind of stuff, and you and you realize that it it's not a death sentence, but it's 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 tough to overcome. Unlike if you go against Clinton. <laughs> what there's okay we're, we're getting into some stuff that we don't need to get into here this like because you don't want to die i don't want to die well, there's yeah. that there's i'm still reeling over whether or not mike leaving people for craft cheese is an insult to them or says something about him or cheese i thought it was an insult to craft cheese <laughs> but uh if it's an insult to craft cheese, craft cheese, then by the really, way, what? Do, by know, the way, I didn't say I would leave everybody. I said there are some people. Out there there that are I would some leave. people. There are some people out there that I would leave for typhoid fever. So I mean, to be honest, there are just some people I would leave because so they had it, it or because you want it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I think we've, I, I think we've gotten into this really well, laid a framework. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is one of those subjects that is. We could talk about it forever. Well, it's, it's largely debated. In, in our own circles right now, I, I don't think that anything, any answer we give is just going to be the answer. I yeah. think it's a conversation, an yeah, evolving yeah. dialogue that needs to go on. But hopefully we've 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 given kind of a framework for the arguments and, and people can kind of go out there and move forward with that knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and, and be part of the conversation. Yeah. Be part of something. Okay. Um I think we're good. I think we're good here. All right. Sounds great. So with that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It has been a blast as always. Do we have a show that, we've got, that we're going to tease? Yeah. And I, I, I'm that's, sorry I interrupted you. Yeah. Well, and, and that's something I think we're going we're gonna to start here. This is a new thing we're doing. We, as podcasters, also check out other, uh, other podcasts. And there's a, kind of a podcasting community. So we said, you know what? If you're out there listening to this podcast, you probably like podcasts. So why don't we share with you 
some other podcast. We're going to do one a week. Just uh, uh, something well, to check out. Probably. You know, if, if, if there's nothing out there that we that we particularly want to... We'll recommend to, this podcast yeah, again. Yeah. yeah. You just, we're going to have to have to figure out where we are. I had a tough decision when I was coming with this uh, because there, there's, there's three or four podcasts that I listen to real, real regular. But the one that... You know, John and Ann have heard me, me brag on this guy forever. His podcast is the podcast that I would want to do if I was by myself. It, it's uh, Bruce Carlson's My History Can Beat Up Your Politics. Okay, before you move on. Yep. John. Yeah. Before we came in to record, I said, what do you want to bet that Mike picks? Yeah. My History Can Beat Up Your Politics. Uh, there's no doubt. <laughs> oh, I, I listen to it every week when it comes out. It's uh, What I like about that show, though, guys, is is he goes through and he looks at, at the modern era and what's going on in politics. And then he goes back and he looks at what what's happened similar in the past and, and, and kind of plays out the game. And... Uh, you know, as a historian, uh, I find it very thought provoking, mm-hmm. uh, and he, and he talks to you like like you're a regular person. If if you're not a historian, I think you'd enjoy it too. So, that's the show, the first show I'd I'd like to um, you know suggest for it. For yeah. you. go out there and listen to Bruce Carlson. He, incredible stuff. Check it out. We'll link it in the uh, things. Up or down. In the ethers. Or... Yeah, we'll link it in the places we can link things. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So. All right. I think you were you were closing us out. Was I? Okay. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this is one in particular that I hope you guys will get in on the conversation about. Um, if you found one of us to be totally wrong, call us out. We'll have a discussion with you about it. Best place to do that is on our social media. Um, that includes Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram. All of those were on. Yes, John. Twitter is at the number six back philosophy. Yeah. Instagram. Everything is, except for Facebook. Oh, and YouTube. Yeah. So uh, YouTube, just search us. Uh, yeah. uh, Twitter is at the the number six pack philosophy. Facebook is the word six pack philosophy. And Instagram is the number six, six number. Yeah, pack philosophy. But some combination of the number or the word six pack you'll philosophy. Find if you search us. our name, you'll find us. That's yeah. the point here. Yeah. You, you. Uh, on that note, don't forget to subscribe. Whatever podcatcher you're listening to, through, um, make sure you subscribe so you'll get notifications whenever we put out new episodes. They come out every Monday. And if you if you want to get them on Monday on YouTube, you need to go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. For $5 a month, you can get them on Mondays. Otherwise, you got to wait till Wednesday. And for $10, you could be watching us live as we record live. on Sundays. Live. And sending us comments. Send, send us comments. Oh, yeah. Yell at me. Sorry. Yell at me. We'll respond. Yeah. Damn it, man. You're wrong. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I want to do. Um, that's what you do but, do. But I'm not a patron, so I don't get to scream at him. I, just, I have to quietly, or we, not quietly. We, we give you a microphone. I, I have yeah. to reasonably argue with you. Um, but no, anyway. Uh, I wonder about the reasonably, but yeah. <laughs> I question you the same way. Don't look at me in that tone of voice, woman. <laughs> but so no, you can check us out on YouTube, watch us roll our eyes at each other and and get mad and flip each other off and do all the fun things. So it'll be great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I'm making this longer than it should be. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. See you next week. I don't think I even want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to talk to you either. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, what a sound. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.